Hey, what is going on you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape and welcome to a brand new series for you all today. Today I bring you guys ending in zero wilderness edition. In this video, I will be killing every single wilderness boss up until the next zero, which means if I am 1,484 chaos fanatic kill count, I will reach 1,500. If I'm 3,612 venonatus kill count, I will reach 3,700. That's basically how this series will play out. The variety of this series should up my chances of receiving a rare or a pet for my collection log while making my high scores look cleaner. The goal of this series is to end in zero with all of my boss kill count but today we are strictly staying in the wilderness with high risk comes high reward hey before we get started though let's do a little word association so I say the word mobile what's the first thing that comes to your head interesting how about RPG all right that's not what I would have gone with but sure uh, here's a tough one raid did you say shadow legends well so did I I mean great minds must think alike right seeing as you've got it on your mind let's talk about this amazing mobile collection RPG Raid Shadow Legends with over 80 million downloads already and over 650 completely unique champions to collect from different factions, Raid is thriving now more than ever and they are now celebrating their fourth year, so happy birthday to Raid Shadow Legends awesome champions, intense PvE and PvP content, tactical upgrade systems, incredible graphics sounds like a pretty good game, right? Well, let me tell you, Raid Shadow Legends Legends has all of these and it is a must play for you right now. You know, since it is the fourth year anniversary, let's have a little bit of a dinner party. Uh, here we have four of my favorite champions, the miscreated monster on the left. We're going to be using him to freeze any food that we have left over for later. Uh, to the right of him, we have Lordly Legionary, which, you know, his sword is on fire. So not only can he cut through that meat, but he can cook it too. Then we have Pitker to the right of him, which is a demon spawn. You know, in case anything gets left on the ground or anything, you can just kind of eat that up and then finally we have rock tooth all the way to the right uh he's an ogre so he'll eat burnt food he'll eat anything really because you know he's just an ogre but uh those are just some of the champions in raid there's so many hundreds of more that you can personally collect and customize uh, the real question is what are you waiting for but that's not all uh with the fourth anniversary in the air there's a ton to get excited about i'm talking dedicated offers promotion codes events and a brand new fusion event where you guys can get your hands on an anniversary themed legend Legendary champion. Just check that out. For new players though, with all of this exciting stuff and more coming to raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use that link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses, including an epic champion, Kellen the Strike, and other useful things. And since it's raid's birthday, the gifts keep on coming. All new and existing players can get a bunch of free birthday gifts. Once you're in game, after clicking the links, just enter promotion code 4 years raid to get your hands on 4 legendary skill tomes plus other useful stuff so with all of these offers and all of these presents awaiting you guys let's celebrate the fourth birthday together scan that QR code click those links in the description or the pinned comment below and I will see you there happy birthday to raid shadow legends and we are back so first off we have the chaos fanatic uh, first I tried to use of course chain mace here but I quickly learned that melee is not the way to go web weaver bow which you'll see multiple Multiple times in this video and in next video as well uh, was definitely the best in slot for this one and I only had to kill it like 16 times I already have the chaos elemental pet so this one is just for the KC uh, really can't expect many drops here other than the odium pieces the malediction pieces and occasionally you'll get some split bark pieces ending the KC with 1500 that was a very quick grind but believe me we have the longest ones to come uh, especially the last three Venonatus, uh, Callisto, and Vedion. Moving on, we have Chaos Elemental. Gotta kill this uh, big purple cloud about 36 times, so maybe we'll get a Dragon Pickaxe, maybe we'll run into some PKers, but for this one, Web Weaver Bow, as well as the anti pking setup in the bottom left featuring the Void Waker, Glory, and Nezi. To my surprise, I did run into a uh, PKer pretty early on into this one. I'm not sure how crowded the Chaos Elemental is these days because I haven't really killed it and I'd say close to a year for a video. But seeing as this guy was wearing a fishbowl helmet, 
and I think he named himself after a cereal. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't too afraid. But then his partner logged in with the uh, Black Dehyde Van Braces as well as the Dragon Spear. And for some reason, these guys just couldn't spell YouTube. I don't know what was going on there. But unfortunately, I didn't have two special attacks. Uh, so I really couldn't get this guy to die as quickly as I wanted him to. And to be tanking on just Ceridome and Bruise against two people, it wasn't uh, the easiest thing in the world. So I did make an escape on the second floor of the castle. And and here's our last kill at the Chaos Elemental, reaching KC 1700. Unfortunately, no drops that are worth much of anything, but that is another one completed. So we have two down so far, and now we're going to move on to the Crazy Archaeologist. In this series, I'll always be refreshing my high scores to show you guys the progress. There's Chaos Ellie. Looks like we're ranked 44 in Chaos Ellie and 453 in Chaos Fanatic. Not too bad. And here we have the Crazy Archaeologist. Uh, I got to do about 20 six kills here, which is not too much, thankfully, because I'm definitely not a big fan of this. Uh, it's really only good for Ironman accounts if you're a lower level. You really can't make the greatest GP an hour here. Uh, I've done multiple videos on this boss, and yeah, the Elijah is definitely not necessary, but you just have to use magic. But uh, just like that, we are done. 1,700 completed. And next up, we have the King Black Dragon. Definitely an iconic monster in this game, and it's decent profit. Unfortunately, I already have the pet, so we're not going for that uh, specific specifically here, but I will take any profit that I do see, or maybe a Visage or a Dragon Pickaxe. Luckily for me, I didn't run into any PKers, and I did bring my Fang along with a decent melee setup with a DFS and the Serpentine Helmet, so uh, this went by pretty quickly, and uh, using the Looting Bag, I was trying to maximize the profit, picking up everything and anything, and I would say the highlight for this one is definitely the U-Logs. Uh, didn't get a Clue Scroll or anything like that, but we will be doing every single Clue Scroll in this series that I do receive, so hopefully we'll see some of those uh, pretty soon. But overall, KBD was a success. You know, I remember the days where I killed a KBD for 50 hours straight with a Zamorak Hosta. And now we're moving on to the big leagues with the Fang. But either way, 3700 KC has been completed and we may return in the future. But for now, on to Scorpia. Now I think we can all agree of all of the wilderness bosses in the game, Scorpia is definitely the most underwhelming. It's, it's also probably one of the most dangerous because you're in multi and if you get frozen in here and a team comes in not only do you have to deal with all that but you also have to deal with all the miniature scorpions attacking you and the big old scorpia attacking you so i had to stay here for about 200 kills in order to reach 2000 kc which is a decent milestone and i did also obtain 63 million magic xp i didn't really think it was worth using a saying staff here so i just used a trident and uh yeah that was about it i definitely had a little bit of an anti-pking setup going with just uh, the ice barrage and then hopefully the lock pick and, you know, make for an escape. Other than that, I would just use the wilderness resource area. Um, you know, I didn't really think I'd run into too many PKers, but I definitely was ready if I did. A guy came in barraging me inside the cave, and then, uh, they had a guy with a ballista outside of the cave, but luckily he did splash on that last barrage, and the wilderness resource area got me my escape. Almost 100 kills in to the Scorpia grind, and there's our first drop, the Odium Shard 3. Uh, it says that it's 93k, it's actually 45k, so it's pretty unfortunate that the rare drops are less than the dragon scimitar drop here. But I don't have the pet here, which is the number one reason why I still kill Scorpia. Other than this, I don't think I'd ever kill Scorpia. So yeah, it's just, uh, the money's just not there. I really wish they'd update the drop table, but I just don't see that ever happening. Here we have another PK attempt. Uh, this time I'm trying to get the freeze and stand under him and log out, but uh, there's so many scorpions around that it might be hard to log out, uh, seeing as I might still be in combat. So plan B, we run all the way to the west and log out. Now, since this is a new series and this is Wilderness Edition, I wanted to make sure to add in every single clip of me uh, escaping PKers, dying the PKers, or fighting back and killing the PKers. There's a Malediction Shard 3, another 43k. Not good. And here's a two versus one, but I got the Elijah on my side. The reason I like to show you guys these clips is simply because there's only going to be one wilderness related video in this series. So why not, you know, get the full experience with all the PKing and whatnot. But I did escape that uh, just using the wilderness resource area once again. And with that being said, there's a clean finish and a clean 2000 kill count here. Unfortunately, no pet was received. That would have been incredible, but uh, the kill count does look nice. And I'm sure I'll return here in the future 
future and get that pet eventually. Either way though, with the completion of a hard clue scroll, we are now going to check the high scores, make sure everything looks right, uh, definitely hover over that Scorpia real quick and see the rank is 1062. So definitely a decent amount of people still killing Scorpia these days, but either way, now it's time for Venonatus. Uh, using my Blood Fury here this time because it was almost out of charges anyway. I figure, you know, why not just waste it here? And we are coming up on the very first kill here. It took me about two minutes to kill this thing, so the fact that we have to kill over 80, this is definitely going to take a while, but uh, the thing that's going to slow this down even more is the PKers. As you can see, we are trying to escape, and as I'm escaping the cave, Venonatus kills one of them for me, so shout out to Venonatus for the assistance there. And then as soon as I'm leaving the cave, I am just trying to get the safety, and then another person shows up trying to spec me and freeze me. Oh, it was just getting messy real quick, but luckily I did manage to log out. So that was a close one, and believe me, uh, this is just the start of all the PKers. As you can see in this next clip, I was caught on the web, and when you are frozen on this web taking consistent damage of three and your prayer points are going down as well, there is no escape. Like, I don't know how talented you must be, but I don't think even the most talented uh, PKers can survive that. So that was very unfortunate. Anytime you're stuck on that web, uh, game over, pretty much. I certainly don't mind if a solo PKer shows up. I would love to anti-PK. Uh, for example, this guy here didn't have a team, so I wasn't really trying to escape. I was just going to dart him as much as I could, and then hopefully the Void Waker would finish him off. Plus, he was wearing green robes, so anytime I run into a green robe PKer with especially snakeskin boots with magic, I, you know, I'm automatically just motivated to get that kill. So as you can see here, really trying to get that uh, prayer down, and I did see that I smited him, so now I just needed a little bit of assistance from Venonatus to get that kill, and sure enough, we did get the smite, and the real question is, what is that plus one? I mean, judging by his gear, I would say it couldn't really be much, but, uh, you know, I'm definitely ready to loot this loot chest if you guys are too. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, an Armadil Godsword PK. That is incredible. Definitely was not expecting that, but that'll make up for a lot of the deaths that you're going to be seeing in this video. All right, here we have a two versus one. As you can see, you know, not a lot of Venonatus being killed during this grind, but uh, we're going to get to that eventually. Just so many PKers love to show up here. I can understand why, but notice that guy all the way to the west. I'm going to do something a little sneaky here. I just got to plan it right, and if everything goes well, there you go. So we did manage to get one kill. <laughs> Looking at the uh, username, that was the same guy who died by Venonatus earlier on, so that uh, worked out pretty well. And while I was trying to escape, I went an opposite route, which I usually don't do, and then all of a sudden, uh, some different people showed up, and it was a lot was going on, but I did get the log out there. And the loot key did bring in another 470k, so that's awesome. And there is 158 million HP XP. Uh, this is a three versus one now. I mean, at this point, I knew I was going to die because these guys caught me when I had no supplies left. So I guess I'm a little bit proud of myself for getting the special attack in. But nevertheless, there's one death of many, many more to come. But that's okay because we're still making some decent money while killing these bosses. I mean, 675 gold ore and all these toad flaxes. Not bad at all. So I did have potential to kill this guy. But unfortunately, I was caught in the web most of the fight. And then all of my supplies ran out. So that was a unfortunate death followed by a death that I definitely could not avoid. Well, at least they had some kind words, that's all I can say. But here we have a really random thing. I just got attacked by this guy in salad robes once again. I don't know what that level 52 was doing, but I think he was rooting for me to kill this guy. And that is exactly what I did. Spamming the H's, I have no idea what that means, but why not? And the loot key, I think, was like 17k, so I'll take anything at this point. Back at Venonatus, here we are again receiving a 900 blood rune drop, which is incredible. Hopefully no PKers show up. And following this, I did receive a very nice 150 Onyx Bolt Tips drop. 1.2 mil. You definitely have to bank anytime you receive that drop. You don't want to be risking that. Uh, but here we are running outside the cave and all of a sudden getting teleblocked by this one guy. And I'm just trying to bank my Onyx Bolt Tips here, so I do not appreciate getting attacked. So what am I going to do? Of course, we're going to pull out that Void Waker. Got a little arrogant there, but what can I say? I was, I was feeling pumped up at this point. So, you know, not only did we kill the teleblocker, but uh, we did 
managed to escape the other two PKers. And as you guys clearly saw, uh, the guy I just killed was protecting Prayer the whole time, but one thing he wasn't doing was protecting Item. Ladies and gentlemen, the second Armadil God Sword PK. Yeah, I was very surprised he didn't protect Item, but everything was just happening so fast he probably just forgot to click on it, but uh, I will certainly take that. That will definitely help out the price check a lot. And here we have the clan from before. Looks like they're in a smaller group this time. Three versus one. I figure if I'm gonna die, I might as well take someone with me. Um, probably won't be able to keep any of the loot, but nevertheless, it'll make for a pretty good clip. And that's exactly what happens. So yeah, more people were showing up at this point, and I had no escape. Luckily, I was able to click on the loot key, and I did see that I was worth about 533k. I would have been really upset if that said like 100 mil or something like that, and I, you know, lost it completely. But luckily, not the worst thing in the world. So that is what it is. Uh, did receive another 150 Onyx Bolt tip drop shortly after that, so that'll be really nice at the end. And here we have another solo PKer, which uh, I certainly had no problem going up against him until this web did spawn. So I did get the kill. Looked like I got the smite as well, but as you can see, I literally just could not click outside of this web. And then Venonatus got extra angry and he killed me, so I lost the loot key. Making my way back, I realized the guy was still here. Uh, I guess he had re-geared and came back at the same time as me. And I asked him just straight up if he had lost anything, and he said no. I talked a little bit to him at the bank, and he said that he intentionally turned his Protect for a Magic Prayer off uh, to make it a funny clip in the video. So I'm not laughing, but there it is in the video. All right, here we go with uh, another team of three on me. Uh, you know, I don't know at this point. There's just so many PKers at the Wilderness Bosses. So my recommendation to you guys is, well, let's just kill this guy real quick. All right, perfect. So my recommendation to you guys is to bring a scout account to make sure that you're ready for anything and everything. And so you get a little bit of a, you know, preview of a PKer running in to kill you so that you have a little bit more time to escape, if that makes sense. As it goes for escaping these guys due to the tele block and the fact that I had no supplies, I was unable to make the escape and I did lose two loot keys, total value 1.1 mil. Back to Venonatus though, with a dragon two-hander sword drop. So yeah, I'll take that. So I know this video is all wilderness related. There's a beautiful 150 onyx bolt tip drop, but as it goes for all the other bosses that I will be covering in this uh, ending in zero series, we have the Slayer bosses featuring Sire, Alchemical Hydra, Kraken, Thermonuclear Smoke Devil, and Scotizo. We have God Wars Dungeon, which is all the God Wars bosses, including Nex. We have Mini Games, which is Barrows, Temporos, Guardians of the Rift, Wintertot, Zolcano, and LMS. We have Quest bosses featuring Vorkath, Muspa, Corrupted Gauntlet, and Gauntlet. And then we have reptiles slash bugs slash cave dwellers, that being Seracnus, KQ, Zolra, all the Dagoneth Kings, Corporal Beast, and Giant Mole. So yeah, guys, keep that in mind. Six videos total for this series, and every boss that I did mention will be covered. And then after that is done, we will move on to the harder things that I've never done before. But with all that being said, we have Venonatus finally completed after dying so many times. 3,700 KC, current rank 595. Let's go ahead and update that notepad document and let's go ahead and move on to Vettion. You know, these uh, bosses that I'm killing now, they're basically just stronger versions of the other bosses. For example, Calvarion is just a weaker version of Vettion. And of course, Spindle is a weaker version of Venonatus. So it's all the same mechanics. And here we have another three versus one. Luckily, I was able to kill one of them. So now it's two versus one. I would say Vettion's probably easier to escape from PKers compared to Venonatus. Definitely a much smaller room. You have more flexibility on where you want to run. And these guys were not that great. Fire staves, etc. So, you know, I was just trying to kill uh, all of them. But, to, you know, to my surprise, I couldn't really do it. Didn't really have any supplies left. So I did get away with the loot key. And I did receive about 300k from that kill. So that's awesome. Well, I ran into the same major who was just attacking me before. And luckily, another team decided to show up. And I was doing my very best to get this mage to die. I'm pretty sure they eventually did die, but uh, probably after I did. So yeah, that was a quick death on my part. Oh well, it happens. Uh, you know, back to Vettion though. Another nice uh, 675 gold ore drop. Uh, the same drop table essentially as all the other wilderness bosses. Just kind of varies in certain ways with uh, herbs and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, uh, the, the drops here are incredible and if you're not dealing with any PKers or interruptions or distractions, you can make a ton of money here. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, here we have a very unfortunate event. I would 
was so close to killing this guy with special attack, and then I just got uh, comboed out by Vedion. That one was a little painful. Uh, coming back here and then just dying right away by another team is essentially how this grind was going for me. Uh, I think I had tried to kill Vedion like seven times, and three different teams showed up in that time, so, you know, I was definitely uh, dying more than I would like to. Uh, but it's important to show that. You know, you don't want to mislead people and, and show never dying, because then people will get the idea that, oh, there's not a lot of PKers here, but that is the complete opposite. I mean, I was doing this at every time zone you could possibly imagine, and that was not assisting me or helping me out at all. There's just so many people here. I certainly tried my best not to scroll up at all during this video. You know, misclick here can definitely cost you a fortune, but for this next clip, I saw this guy doing Wilderness Slayer, and as he was picking up his cannon, I decided to rush him, and I actually pulled it off. I was surprised to see the Void Waker hit so high and so powerful, considering my gear and his gear as well, and to my surprise, I got most of the cannon and a total of 1.1 mil, so every bit definitely helps out as it goes for dying as many times as I have. And with that being said, Vedion is complete 300 kills later, well, I guess you could say just 300 kills uh, all in all, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and update that uh, notepad document. We already have the pet for Vedion, so not a really big worry there to uh, receive that. We didn't have the Venonatus pet, and unfortunately we didn't receive that, so definitely gonna go back to him in the future. Um, but yeah, I did complete an elite clue scroll casket, and that just leaves one more boss, ladies and gentlemen, that being Callisto. And I, I said out loud, you know, this can't be worse than Vedion. Oh, how wrong I was. This was one million times worse than Vedion, because I think I died more to the boss than I did to PKers, but PKers certainly didn't help out at all either, so don't get me wrong, the drops here are incredible, but the fact that you have to ice barrage Callisto, and then he gets unfrozen as soon as he throws the bear traps out at you, and of course I'm splashing the barrages most of the time anyway with his gear, just simply means that he melees me like 50 all the time if he gets too close, and then I get stuck in a trap, or worse, you know, I forget to click on the protect from magic, and I get hit an instant 35 or 50 from that, and then not to mention, uh, it's a massive room, and if you get frozen here, you are gonna be in trouble, so yeah, I mean, uh, the amount of times I died here, I lost count, but you're gonna see all of them, so just understand that if you're gonna be killing Callisto, make sure to watch a guide in depth and do a few practice runs risking minimal so that you can kind of get the understanding of the mechanics here. Even after killing him as many times as I did, I think well over 80 times, I still have no idea what I'm doing here, so yeah, this is the one boss that I just cannot conquer, and that is why, uh, of all bosses in the wilderness, he's always been my least favorite, and other than doing one video on him with the Vigorous Chain Mace a while back, I had never killed this thing, so yeah, not a big fan. But uh, either way, I did receive an elite clue scroll, and then of course uh, Callisto killed me for it, so there goes my third age, I suppose, but uh, occasionally what would happen is some people would show up and help me out because they would be doing the same thing I was doing, and the only difference there is you do get a drop, but it's not going to be as much as you originally would because two people end up splitting it, but that didn't really last too long because PKers just kept on showing up. All right, with uh, 58 kills left to go, there's a dragon pickaxe. It's a breath of fresh air to see a rare drop on the ground. Really haven't seen too many rares this whole video, so I will definitely take that and uh, we'll throw that in the price check at the end. Here is a long fight. I think I was fighting with this guy for over three and a half minutes, and finally I killed him. I don't know what he was doing, but uh, my web weaver bow apparently outpowered his ballista. So yeah, there's 87k key, and then I think the other one was like 30k or so. I really hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. Remember, this one's a little messy, uh, a lot going on all over the place just because it is in the wilderness, but we still have five other areas in the game to cover, and so many different bosses in those areas, so stay tuned for that. My girlfriend's actually the one that inspired the making of this series because she did loot from 100 kills on pretty much every boss and she made over 500 mil and obtained so many different pets. So I kind of wanted to do the same thing, although I wasn't starting from 0 to 100, I was just going to be ending everything that I was currently at in a 0. So anything can happen, everyone has different RNG, but seeing her luck definitely made me want to do something like this. And although we haven't seen a pet drop in this video or anything too crazy, I'm still making some some pretty consistent uh, money per hour, and the anti PKing is going decent as well. I mean, so many deaths granted, but those two Armado Godsword PKs are going to help out a ton with the price check. And we're still doing some clue scrolls here and there too, so that's nice. And I'm also learning uh, all the different mechanics of these uh, stronger wilderness bosses, because I actually had never killed Artiro before, which is the smaller variant of Callisto, 
So I really didn't know what I was doing at Callisto. This was definitely the hardest one for me. But nevertheless, it is important to learn these things. And, uh, you know, maybe in the future, I'll work on a longer term uh, video on one of these bosses if I ever go for a dry streak on the pet or something like that. But only time will tell. This is probably my favorite moment of the video. I had no chance of survival here. And this random guy came in and instantly attacked the guy that I was on. And usually the complete opposite happens. Everyone always kills me first, but this guy did the opposite. And he didn't ask for any credit or any split. He just, you know, just wanted to help me. And there you go. We actually got the kill and no smite this time around, but a beautiful 686k. So that will make up for a death or two. Speaking of death, I did receive 700 death runes from one kill of Callisto. And usually you used to get like one rune pickaxe, but I actually got three in one kill. So the drops are definitely really good here. All right. So this next one is going to be in slow motion for you guys. As you can see, I'm in multi combat, but uh, I throw an ice barrage as he was close to me. Then he runs next to his teammate. And oh my, I have just sculled up with full armadillo. Yeah, I mean, I was a little worried at this point. I had never really made this mistake. I mean, I used to actually always make this mistake before, but never with this kind of gear set up. But seeing as they were wearing full blue mystic and, you know, one of them had uh, an air staff, the other one had a clown mask. Let's just say I wasn't like, you know, having a heart attack over here. I just ran to the east and I did get away. But yeah, needless to say, be very careful if you're going to be in multi-combat and you're going to try to use uh, ice barrage on an opponent maybe just do an ice blitz you know it's much safer that way but either way uh, I did get away with my armadillo that would have been depressing had I died there especially to those guys but I'm sure it would have made their day but luckily it didn't all right 15 kills left at Callisto I know the deaths are just insane at this point it's probably actually triggering a few of you guys in the comments below if you have mastered uh, Callisto yourself you're probably really curious as to why I just keep dying I don't know I don't have an excuse I just think the mechanics are very challenging and I think that I need to bring a little bit of mage bonus so that I can catch every freeze that I throw on Callisto and maybe just work on my you know the, I don't know work on the mechanics of the room and just try to keep better distance than I was but I just wanted to show you guys all the deaths in this video because this one took a long time to do three days to make this video and mainly it was because I just kept dying and taking breaks you know getting pretty stressed out here and there but um needless to say though uh yeah I mean this was a lot of fun for me even though I was dying so much it was it was still enjoyable i mean the few kills that i was able to get definitely made up for all the deaths that i have um so either way though another team coming in here there's no way i can escape this i did have a nice escape right before this though if you saw me uh barrage that major in full armadillo and then stand on top of him and log out that's that's one of the best ways you can escape single pkers but teams are a little bit of a different story either way though three kills left ladies and gentlemen and of course pkers show up at the very end here yeah, I, I just don't get it. But either way, I'm going to sit down as, as I'm being told to grab a cup of coffee and come on back down to Callisto to finish this video up. My goodness, what a grind this was. I think if you took Callisto out of this video, this this probably would be an easy, uh, you know, kind of laid back uh, video that I've done. But now nah, Callisto likes to add insult to injury a lot of the time. And to make matters even worse, as I'm running out, you know, to bank and do the price check, I'm getting tele blocked as I run. You know, it's like that's just kind of it's story of my life really with this video so many pkers so just be ready for that guys if you're ever going to be killing these bosses be ready for the pkers uh but ladies and gentlemen this wraps up episode number one let's take a close look at the high scores here we're going to go ahead and update our kill count to show that we did go from 398 callisto just now to 400 so it looks a lot cleaner go ahead and update that uh notepad there a lot of the things look much nicer chaos fanatic callisto as well as the uh, Scorpia and Vedion and Venonatus. I mean, the list goes on. But in total, in this video, I did die approximately 22 times from PKers. I lost around 15 mil in deaths, and I spent around 5 mil in supplies. Haven't really shown you guys the bank much during this video, but here is the end result. Check out all this loot. So what we're going to do is we're going to price check all of the PVMing loot first, combine the total, and then we're going to be price checking the PKing loot. Overall, for First price check comes out to be 10.5 mil. Got a ton of logs, decent amount of herbs and other things. The second price check, this does include all of the uh, red dehyde and tons of onyx bolt tips, as well as a huge amount of gold ore. This one does come out to be 12.6 mil. 
And now we have the third price check. This is 2 million coins across all the wilderness bosses, as well as one dragon pickaxe and some odium shards and malediction. This one does come out to be 8.5 mil. So the overall loot from PVMing in this episode is 31.6 mil. Take into account, though, that 8 mil of that I did not receive because PKers took it from me. In other words, that could have been 39.6 mil. All of my PKs did add up to 27.2 mil, so total made 58.8 mil, total profit 38 mil. No rares or pets, just the dragon pickaxe, but that's all good. Two awesome PKs, and my high scores is coming along nicely, so let's go ahead and open up this hard clue to receive a nice little 180. 84k followed by the master clue or sorry the elite clue scroll and that is 87k well that is going to be it for now guys thank you very much for your time today a special shout out to swan positive and matthew stivers and a big thank you to all of the other youtube channel members uh here we go looking at the rune light loot tab you can kind of see everything for what it's worth uh and, you know separated so if you guys want to pause or anything like that that's really all of the loot from this video as well as all of the keys and yeah what a great experience it feels really nice to upload something new for you guys and if you do enjoy it just simply show it by clicking the like button or commenting below if you want to support the channel any further if you do download that raid shadow legends link in the description it helps my channel out dramatically every download really helps a lot and that's all you need to do so keep that in mind but that's it for me today guys what a long video i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you in 24 hours from now with a lava dragon video until then mr no sleep out